So the chapter for this lecture is chapter four. So we're gonna go over a few of the terms for chapter four. So a lot of this chapter talks about the deep sea and some of these terms are very specific for different parts of the deep sea. So we're gonna start with the first one here. This is called an abyssal hill. This is a feature that is found in the deep ocean a lot of people think of the deep ocean as just flat. That's what an abyssal plain is, right? Just flat, there's really nothing there in terms of hills or mountains or valleys. Abyssal hills are features that occur in the deep sea that are very large hills. So you can think of them kind of like small underwater mountains. And they're, they tend to have a lot of life and animals that use them because in the abyssal plain, there's really nowhere, there's no structure, there's nowhere to hide, really. The abyssal zone, the abyssal abyss is another way to say deep ocean, right? So the abyssal zone is just a, um, the deep part of the ocean. We've talked a lot about tectonic activity, volcanoes and earthquakes, Whenever you have a coastline, a beach, that has a lot of activity like earthquakes or volcanoes, those are what are called active margins, right? So here in South Carolina, we have what's known as a passive margin, right? Passive means quiet, right? So the coast of South Carolina, we don't have earthquakes, we don't have volcanoes. Right, so it's passive. But if you go off of California or Japan or New Zealand, there's a lot of volcanoes. There's a lot of earthquakes and those are called active. The next term is bathymetry. Bathymetry is a word that's used to describe the study of the ocean floor in terms of features and elevation. So one way to think about this is what does the bottom of the ocean look like, right? So if you look at land, if you're flying in an airplane over land, you can look down, you can see hills and mountains and valleys and canyons and things like that. When we study the ocean, the bottom of the ocean like that using sonar primarily. We'll talk more about sonar um, when we get to technology, but that is bathymetry, understanding the depth of the ocean and what features there are. Bathyol zone is a special part of the deep ocean. I wouldn't worry about this term. The benthic zone is anytime you have the bottom of the ocean. So anytime you have sediment, sand, that sand, that sediment is known as benthos. And so when we say benthic zone, that's just talking about animals that live in the sand. You can also have benthic zones at the beach, right? So if you go to the beach and you're splashing in the water, you're walking on the benthic zone, right? Because you're on sand. That's, there's different definitions for the benthic zone. Continental margin is an area that is part of the continent. So if you are in South Carolina and you're at Myrtle Beach, you can walk on the beach, right? It's just sand there. But if you walk out into the ocean, you're still on the continent right? North America, you're still on the continent and you have to walk a long way, probably several kilometers before you're off the continent. And when you're off the continent, that is what's known as the continental shelf. So you can think about kind of the continent. And then as you go into the deep ocean, that change right there, that is also known as the continental rise, right? So continental rise, continental shelf, 
continental slope are all kind of the area that changes from the continent to the ocean. And one thing you should know about the continental margin, it is still part of the continent. It's just underwater. And that's, that's all that is. Okay, the next term is fracture zone. Fracture zone is anytime you have a fracture, a break, a crack. So if you look at the bottom of the ocean where you have plates that are moving, a lot of times you have cracks. Those are fractures. The guyot is a very specific term to describe an underwater volcano that is not active generally, but it has a flat top. Right. And so the reason they have a flat top is they used to be an island. So if you imagine the ocean level here, you have an island sticking up above the ocean. What happens is as that island is, is sticking above the surface, waves erode the top of that island. So it becomes flattened. And then as the sea level increases, the guyot is underwater. And now it's flat because the top has been washed away. That's what a guyot is. Hadal zone is kind of like Bathiel zone, very specific part of the deep ocean. Don't worry about Hadal zone either. Hydrothermal vents, probably my favorite part of marine science. We'll watch, a, we'll watch some videos later on about them. What you need to know about them now is they are places at the bottom of the ocean where you have super hot water, about 400 degrees C, 300 degrees C, very hot water coming out. That's, that's pretty much what you need to know right now. Ice age is um, a period in the past when there's been a change in climate, global climate, because of changes in circulation, variety of different things. But an ice age is when you have areas that like the last ice age was the little ice age was 16,000 years ago. And essentially Northern Europe and England was under ice, right? And so the temperature goes down and there's a lot more ice. Island arc is anytime you have islands in an arc, kind of like a, like a, a C shape. So if you kind of draw a C, you have islands kind of dotted there. And there's lots of examples of these, um, Japan, um, a lot in the South Pacific, you tend to have islands in an arc. Littoral zone, not terribly important. Narratic zone, I wouldn't worry about that one either. Ocean basin is essentially the ocean, right? Where the ocean is. So when we talk about the Atlantic Ocean, that is in the Atlantic Ocean Basin, right? It's kind of, you can think of basin like like a bathtub, right? And you have the ocean in it. Ocean ridge is an important term I want you all to know. This is, the best way to describe a ridge is essentially a mountain, a series of mountains at the bottom of the ocean. So if you look at the Himalayas or the Appalachian Mountains or the Alps, similar things exist at the bottom of the ocean. And they tend to happen at active margins and they tend to produce ridges. Those are mountains. Oceanic zone, just a fancy way of saying the ocean. Passive margin, we've already talked about. That's the opposite of active margin. Passive margins really are very quiet. There's not, there's no earthquakes, no volcanoes. Pelagic zone is a specific term for a part of the ocean. It is generally the part where fish live, things in the upper part of the ocean tend to be pelagic. And pelagic we'll talk about when we talk about jellyfish and, and other animals later on, but pelagic just means open ocean. Right, there's nothing around it. So if you go to the middle of the Pacific Ocean, that's the pelagic zone. There's nothing around you, no islands. It's just 
water. That's it. A seamount is similar to a guyot, but is not flat at the top. A seamount is just an underwater island. That's all it is. Shelf break is the change. Remember, we talked about the continental shelf and how it changes from the continent to the deep ocean. That change right there, that specific point where it changes, that is what's known as a shelf break. Sublittoral zone, not important. Submarine canyon, kind of think about the Grand Canyon, but underwater. That's all it is, is a canyon. Generally, these are formed by rivers, old uh, rivers that used to flow. So lots of examples. If you look off of um, the East Coast of the United States, there's a lot of submarine canyons. There's a really big one off of California called the Monterey Canyon. Transform faults. We talked about um, divergent and convergent faults. Transform faults are when they kind of move next to each other. They're not going towards each other. They're not going away. They're just kind of moving next to each other. That's a transform fault. A trench is where you have a very deep area in the ocean. And trenches are formed where you have two plates that are coming together and they differ in density. The one that is more dense will go down. And as the one that's more dense goes down, what it creates right here where they meet is a trench and it's very deep. And there's lots of examples of trenches. Um, there's one off of Japan, there's one off of uh, Chile, there's um, one off of uh, New Zealand. There's lots of examples of trenches and they tend to be very, very deep. Turbidity current, essentially a sandstorm in the ocean. It happens, it's not common, but it happens. And then zone just means an area of something. So if we talk about a fracture zone or a hadal zone, zone just means a specific area. So we're talking about a zone. All right, well, that's the end of chapter four, not quite as bad as chapter three, which was really long. I apologize again about that, but this is chapter four. Um, the next one will be chapter five. So hope this helped you out and let me know if you have any questions.